living that good life. We're living, 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 living with Jimmy B. So I have a uh, small chicken. It's a uh, whole broiling uh, chicken and it's all natural, uh, which is probably why it's so small. <laughs> no uh, hormones, no steroids, nothing like that in it. And I'm going to butterfly this chicken, um, commonly referred to as spatchcocking. Inside of it. And I'll just uh, turn this around and I have my kitchen shears, which I use exclusively in my kitchen. I'm just going to go along the backbone and make uh, an incision. I want to get as close to uh, the backbone as you can. Then I'm gonna go along the other side and do the same thing. And this is what you call spatchcocking. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to uh, open it up and I have my knife and I'm just gonna make an incision right here. And that's gonna allow it to further butterfly open. Now I'm really big on cleaning my chicken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put this in uh, vinegar, salt, and uh, water uh, for at least 20 minutes because I don't play that. Um, gotta clean your chicken. You gotta clean it. You gotta make sure that you didn't take anything out of that. Um, get rid of any uh, bacteria or anything that you, that could linger on that chicken before you do anything. And so that that's something that I, I prefer to do. So that's what I'm gonna do at this time. But uh, before I do that, you know, just little things that I prefer to do for my guests. Uh, nobody's gonna eat this. Nobody's gonna eat this and it's just gonna be in the way. So um, all of this can make a really good stock. So that's what I'm going to do with it, is make a stock with it. So, you know, people will pick through it and have to put it on their plate and everything. And um, I'm just gonna take it out. Once I'm done prepping my chicken, I'm going to uh, place it in the brine for the 20 minutes and I'm going to season it with my uh, seasoning mixture, which I'll uh, explain more thoroughly what goes into my seasoning uh, in the next segment. And um, I'm going to uh, place it on a cooling rack, uncovered uh, overnight, and that's going to allow 
that skin to be nice and dry because we want that skin nice and dry so we don't want to create a moisture barrier by covering it with plastic or anything like that so once I uh, brine it for 20 minutes I'm going to um, season it and place it on a cooling rack uncovered in the refrigerator overnight I hear people say I use this I use that this works the best, that works the best. Use what you like to taste. You know your taste buds, use what you like to taste. I personally like garlic powder, I like onion powder, I love celery salt, and I love a spicy kick to my chicken, so I do like to use cayenne pepper, and a lot of it, probably more than most people do. When it's all said and done, I would say I use about 11 different spices in my spice blend for my fried chicken and I'm heavy on my spices so I use plenty of them and I pop off the lid of the shaker and I just get my teaspoon and go at it I make enough so that I can season my breading my flour I preheat it about a quart and a half of vegetable oil for 10 minutes at a medium high temperature to arrive at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I cooked my bird for about three minutes, skin side down, and flipped it over, cooked it for another three minutes on the other side. Depending on the size of your bird, you can cook it up to five minutes each side. I pulled my bird out of the grease and immediately placed it into my flour mixture. My flour mixture consists of equal parts, high gluten bread flour, cornstarch, fine yellow cornmeal, my seasoning mix, and two tablespoons of baking powder different versions of my fried chicken recipe. For this particular recipe, I wanted to go with a thinner breading, so I opted not to use the uh, egg white dipped uh, for the breading uh, this time because I wanted a thinner coat breading on it. And I'm just gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes so that the flour can really get a nice adherence to it. Now I brought that oil back up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit by reheating it again for another 10 minutes at medium high temperature. And I'm ready for my second fry with my breading on it. And I'm going to let this go for about three minutes and then I'm going to give it a flip and then it should be ready to go. It should be all done. Voila, and here we have it. A double fried chicken that is juicy on the inside, tender, succulent. Uh, we started with no breading and we did our first fry and we breaded it for the second fry so that we could have that breading perfectly browned. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post another video.